Hey everybody, Simon here from Simon Says Cycling. Today I'm going to talk about when to ride a double pace line and when to ride a single pace line. I'm going to do some more videos on this and really get into the ins and outs of how to ride a double pace line because uh, what I see on many of the rides is many of the riders, even the experienced riders, have never been taught the correct way to do this. Now this is something we were taught as professionals and it was definitely a specific way to do this in a right way and when you did it in a wrong way it all fell apart but first I'm going to talk about when do you want to ride in a double pace line in other words two lines of riders rotating where each rider only spends a short amount of time on the front before they switch over to the slower line and back down the line you see this in the Tour de France when multiple teams are working together to chase down the breakaway that's a double pace line you want to do a double pace line when you have a fair amount of number of riders maybe maybe 8, 10, 15, when there's a big group of riders working together, this is going to be the most efficient way to work together. Now remember, nobody should stand out. Nobody should be stronger than the next rider. Nobody needs to pull harder than the next rider. You only pull as long as it takes you to pass the rider, and then you shift over to the slower descending line, and so on. And that's the rotation, like a constant chain of movement. So the key there is nobody stands out, everybody pulls more or less the same speed um, and keeps it nice and smooth. Now you'll see on group rides there'll always be somebody who decides they want to show how strong they are and they just kind of, when it's their turn to get to the front, they push it as hard as they can, they string it all out into one line and they destroy the double pace line. Now that's definitely bad rider etiquette when it comes to riding a double pace line. Now when do you want to ride a single pace line? Well. A single pace line makes a lot more sense when, the, when there's a lot fewer riders. When there's five riders, six riders, when there's just a few riders like in a breakaway, a double pace line is not going to work because the riders are not going to get enough recovery to between switching from the ascending line and the descending line. So this is when you want to use the, the single pace line. Now you'll see this in the team time trial of the Tour de France. Those have nine, typically nine riders and they use typically the single pace line strategy where each rider pulls from anywhere from 20 to maybe 50 seconds. So when you do a, a single pace line, the important part there is the riders pull according to their strengths. So if there's somebody who's very strong, they might pull for a minute or two. If there's somebody who's barely hanging on, they might pull for 15 to 20 seconds. But single pace line is really going to work far better when you have a small amount of riders, maybe five, maybe eight, you know, somewhere in that range. And then the double pace line is going to work incredibly when you have a bigger group of riders who are all on the same page who want to work together as a team and that's going to be 10, 15 riders or more. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Look out for more videos on how to ride those double pace lines and single pace lines in the coming weeks. Have a great day.